ਮਿੱਤਰ ਪਿਆਰੇ ਉਹ ਪ੍ਰੋਗਰਾਮ ਦਿਲਜੀਤ ਬਰਾੜ ਸ਼ੋਅ ਵਿੱਚ ਤੁਹਾਡਾ ਸਵਾਗਤ ਤੁਸੀਂ ਦੇਖ ਰਹੇ ਹੋ ਵਿਨੀਪੈਗ ਹਲਚਲ ਟੀਵੀ ਚੈਨਲ ਸਾਡੇ ਇਸ ਪ੍ਰੋਗਰਾਮ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਅਸੀਂ ਵੱਖ-ਵੱਖ ਵਿਸ਼ਿਆਂ ਤੇ ਚਰਚਾ ਕਰਦੇ ਹਾਂ ਜ਼ਿੰਦਗੀ ਦਾ ਕੋਈ ਵੀ ਖੇਤਰ ਹੋਵੇ ਉਸ ਖੇਤਰ ਨਾਲ ਸੰਬੰਧਿਤ ਮਹਿਮਾਨਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਤੁਹਾਡੇ ਰੂਬਰੂ ਕਰਵਾਉਣੇ ਆ ਭਾਵੇਂ ਉਹ ਰਾਜਨੀਤਿਕ ਖੇਤਰ ਹੋਵੇ ਵਿਦਿਅਕ ਖੇਤਰ ਹੋਵੇ ਧਾਰਮਿਕ ਖੇਤਰ ਹੋਵੇ ਸਮਾਜਿਕ ਖੇਤਰ ਹੋਵੇ ਸਮਾਜਿਕ ਕੁਰੀਤੀਆਂ ਦੀ ਗੱਲ ਹੋਵੇ ਜਾਂ ਤੁਹਾਡੇ ਬੱਚਿਆਂ ਦੇ ਪਾਲਣ ਪੋਸ਼ਣ ਦੀ ਗੱਲ ਹੋਵੇ ਜਾਂ ਪਰਿਵਾਰਿਕ ਸਮੱਸਿਆਵਾਂ ਦੀ ਗੱਲ ਹੋਵੇ ਹਰ ਕਿਸੇ ਵਿਸ਼ੇ ਤੇ ਸਾਡੇ ਪ੍ਰੋਗਰਾਮ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਗੱਲ ਕੀਤੀ ਜਾ ਸਕਦੀ ਹੈ ਅੱਜ ਅਸੀਂ ਜਿਸ ਹਸਤੀ ਨੂੰ ਤੁਹਾਡੇ ਰੂਬਰੂ ਕਰਵਾ ਰਹੇ ਹਾਂ ਉਹ ਇੱਕ ਉੱਗੀ ਰਾਜਨੀਤਿਕ ਹਸਤੀ ਹੈ ਵਿਨੀਪੈਗ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਜਾਣਿਆ ਪਛਾਣਿਆ ਨਾਂ ਹੈ ਖਾਸ ਤੌਰ ਤੇ ਭਾਰਤੀ ਤੇ ਪੰਜਾਬੀ ਭਾਈਚਾਰੇ ਨਾਲ ਬਹੁਤ ਮੋਹ ਪਿਆਰ ਹੈ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਦਾ ਮੇਰੀ ਮਰਾਦ ਹੈ ਐਮਪੀ ਕੈਵਨ ਲੈਮਰੂ ਵੈਲਕਮ ਕੈਵਨ ਇਟਸ ਗ੍ਰੇਟ ਟੂ ਬੀ ਵਿਦ ਯੂ ਜੀ ਸੋ ਕੈਵਨ ਲੈਮਰੂ 20 ਸਾਲ ਲਿਬਰਲ ਪਾਰਟੀ ਆਫ ਕੈਨੇਡਾ ਦੇ ਐਮਐਲਏ ਰਹਿ ਚੁੱਕੇ ਨੇ ਤੇ 2010 ਤੋਂ ਲੈ ਕੇ ਐਮਪੀ ਦੇ ਤੌਰ ਤੇ ਸੇਵਾਵਾਂ ਨਿਭਾ ਰਹੇ ਨੇ ਇਸ ਵੇਲੇ ਵਿਨੀਪੈਗ ਨਾਰਥ ਦੇ ਐਮਪੀ ਨੇ ਸੋ ਕੈਵਨ ਵਾਟ ਆਰ ਯੂ ਅਪ ਟੂ ਥੀਸ ਡੇਸ well you know the house is sitting in ottawa and when the house sits in ottawa that means i fly back and forth between ottawa and winnipeg a lot so we're debating all sorts of interesting stuff price on pollution uh lots of budget issues but a real special topic came up not that long ago but a week or so ago and that was we're debating uh seek heritage month uh and that's an interesting debate in itself great so uh, you're talking about sick heritage and and six in manitoba and canada as a whole i've seen you at punjabi events mm-hmm. i've seen you at religious places and and similar events so sometimes you're wearing a turban on your head why yes. do you do so well you know back in 1988 when i was actually first elected uh one of the first things i did was i went to visit the seek society gurdwara out on on mallard and by doing that i really had the opportunity to experience uh sikhism and get a better understanding of our indo-canadian community uh and a better appreciation of a, a faith uh that i really respect and i wear the turban because i i value the importance of the khalsa um and for me personally it's a way in which i could show support for what i believe is a very important issue um you know there's the turban means a great deal to me as i know it means to so many sikhs and that's why it's been a really interesting debate we just had a couple of hours debate already on the idea of canada passing legislation which will uh, recognize april as Sikh Heritage Month and it's Sukh Dhaliwal that moved the the bill the legislation a few weeks back I was one of the seconders uh, for the legislation and we're very excited that if there's a good chance it could be passing this year which would mean uh we would have Sikh heritage by law for the very first time come April 2019 wonderful you know Kevin uh, religious issues yeah social issues and cultural issues they are important for sure absolutely but do you think religion and politics should be seen as together or we need to segregate them and deal with them totally separately i don't believe that we have to do the two extremes you know you know politics and religion needs to be respectful of their place in in society uh and i think most people recognize that um but let's not forget how important it is for in particular politicians to better understand their constituents you need to be able to communicate and have a good understanding of their faith i would believe so for example if it wasn't if i didn't have the the opportunity to visit whether it's seek society on mallard or uh sing saba on mall uh uh on Sturgeon Road uh, or other good waters um I wouldn't have the same appreciation for what Sikhism is all about it's because of the good waters whether it's here in Winnipeg or in the Punjab uh, or in Vancouver or Calgary when I get the opportunity to go to good waters I do because it gives me a better sense of what's a very important issue faith for the people that many of the people that I represent so I think that it's it's good to to respect faith and the role it plays in society uh, and then on the other hand we got to be careful that we don't uh, have 
faith ruling politics or vice versa. Yeah. So I think there's a respectful distance that they need to, uh, to maintain, but it's really important, I believe, uh, that uh, our political leaders have a better sense of what Sikhism is all about. It's a, it's a wonderful world uh, religion in which uh, I think that the more politicians understand it, the better appreciation we have of Sikhism or our Indo-Canadian community as a whole. Yeah, talking about Indo-Canadian community, it, I'm not just talking about a single religion, but right. you know, Indo-Canadian community, they are known to be influenced by religious things and religious issues. And recently, I have seen Canadian politicians visiting India and visiting their holy places and posing pictures and posting on social media. Yes. Do you think that some of the politicians could exploit this fact for political gains? There's always a risk of exploitation. Uh, and, you know, I would acknowledge that up front. But what's, what is the trade-off? I would argue that the trade-off is worth it. The key is, who are the people, the seniors, you know, those individuals that protect the integrity of the institution or of the church or of the faith and making sure that the, the congregation is not being exploited. Uh, and I would like to think that if it was not, as I say, for the uh, open arms of the, uh, of the, whether it's a mosque or a gurdwara, uh, that I wouldn't have that, that real, true, well-grounded understanding uh, of whether it's Muslim faith or Sikhism or Hinduism um, or for all that matter, even from the Christian side of things you get a better appreciation by being engaged. Um, and I say, there's still that line, you gotta be careful you don't cross it. Um, I like to think that at times, maybe some politicians do get close and maybe even cross it at times. Um, equally, sometimes church crosses the line in terms of political interference. We gotta watch for it and just be careful and respectful. Great. Would you like to reflect on your connections and networking with Indo-Canadian communities living in Winnipeg, as per your past experiences? Well, you know, the Indo-Canadian community as a whole has, uh, has grown tremendously over the last uh, 20 years. Um, it is one of the reasons why Manitoba, and we just spoke, speak on Manitoba, but it, it virtually applies here not only in Manitoba but across Canada. Uh, the Indo-Canadian community's growth has really fed the growth of Canada, not only in terms of uh, the economy, but it's enriched our uh, heritage. Uh, it's become a very, uh, you know, very important part of Canadian fabric. So when you think of all, well, what's great about being in Canada? We talk about the diversity. The diversity is so very, very important. Well, the Indo-Canadian diversity and how, I should say, the Indo-Canadian heritage and how that has impacted Canada's uh, diversity is second to no other community. And, and you see that, um, whether it's the number of restaurants, whether it's uh, the involvement in the economy, uh, whether it's healthcare uh, or the, the private sector, small businesses, uh, the Indo-Canadian community has been a driving force of our economy and our society. In the last 20 in the last 20 years in particular great do you think we need more immigrants for manitoba and <coughs> talk, talking about well uh, immigration is what's driven our province if you take away immigration in the last uh, 10 15 years the population of manitoba would have actually decreased so if, if not for immigrants coming to our province manitoba's population would be decreasing and we only have a population of 1.3 million people in order for us to grow into the future, we need to increase our population. If you take a look at Manito uh, Winnipeg's north end, it's being fueled <clears throat> in most part, in good part, by the growth of our Punjabi uh, community. The Punjabi community makes up a ma vast majority of the Indo-Canadian population in Winnipeg's uh, north end. Uh, even though the Indo-Canadian community is throughout our province, but in the north end, the Punjabi community has really been pushing uh, the growth uh, of, the, uh, of the north end. Great. And uh, are we equipped and have infrastructure to welcome 
such number of immigrants come in every day, almost every day to Manitoba. Like, do we have jobs? Do, do we have infrastructure? Do we, are we able to embrace them nicely? Well, it's, it's a good question. You know, there's always room for improvement uh, on that, Diljeet. Um, as of right now, what we, what we do know uh, is that individuals that are coming to Manitoba through immigration, uh, generally speaking, are very successful. Uh, they're able to, to find employment, they're able to find uh, homes uh, and have a high level uh, of success. Uh, we've seen that over the last uh, number of years. It's something in which we have to continue to, to monitor. Manitoba is kind of like an economy that's fairly steady. Our employment rate is reasonable. Uh, in the last decade it's been pretty good. Our unemployment rate's been fairly low. Uh, but at the end of the day, there's always room uh, to, to improve. But remember, immigration is also one of the things that drives an economy. It adds more value. It creates more jobs. You can go into some rural communities in particular, and if it wasn't for immigration, uh, some of those communities would be stagnant, if not uh, starting to depopulate, which is not healthy for our province. And if it's not healthy for the province, it hurts all of us. Like, we all benefit by a healthy immigration uh, program. I've seen you visiting India and particularly Punjab, villages in Punjab, right? Yes. Even in Philippines. Yes. Would you like to share some experiences uh, from your Punjab visit to Punjab? I've had the opportunity over the years to, uh, to visit the Punjab on, on many occasions. When I travel to India, uh, people that know that I go to India I go to the Punjab because that to me is where most, uh, you know, the Indo-Canadian community I say most for me are from the Punjab and I just love being at the Punjab. You know, the, the Golden Temple, I've been to, the, uh, to India before with my daughter, uh, Cindy, who happens to be the MLA and we've had the opportunity to go to the Golden Temple, many other uh, Gurdwaras. Uh, I've even seen a Christian church inside, uh, inside the Punjab. Uh, you know, we, we visited communities like uh, Moga, uh, Zira, Ludhiana, uh, you know, there's so many things that you can do uh, when you go to the Punjab. Uh, we not only do that touristy thing by going to the markets, we host immigration workshops, uh, we'll visit other politicians. Uh, it's just a, an enjoyable experience. For me personally, what it does is it helps me better identify with members of the community here in Winnipeg because there's so many people uh, that uh, identify with their home. As I say, we, diversity is our greatest strength. If diversity is our greatest strength, that means we should also appreciate uh, our homeland. So for people that have come from India or uh, in particular from the Punjab, uh, we don't want them to forget about the Punjab. The Punjab stays in the heart. It doesn't leave. And uh, for me, if I get to visit the Punjab, uh, it allows me to have a better appreciation uh, for my constituents. Professional qualities the shades the blinds like it to what they share pawn to care hai MK window covering. Sadi shades the windows dia installations completely customizable name. Coat land was the Sanuaji Sampar Karo, Nabe Trindastan way, Unat Nabe. 9054975990 This is the address note Carlo Unit number 10 Building number 240 Clarence Street Brampton Ontario Te to see sadi website we visit kar sakde ho mkwindowcovering.com Haj is our denial sampark karo ਤੱਚ ਸੁਨੋ ਨੂੰ ਕਰਕੇ ਆਈ ਹਵਾ ਚੀਰ ਦੀ ਜਾਵੇ ਕਰਕੇ ਪਰਾਲੀ ਇਕੱਠੀ ਲਾਈ ਧੂਣੀ ਚੇਤੇ ਆਵੇ ਸਤਿ ਸ਼੍ਰੀ ਅਕਾਲ ਜੀ ਮੈਂ ਰਾਜਵੀਰ ਰਾਜਾ ਤੁਸੀਂ ਦੇਖ ਰਹੇ ਹੋ ਵਿਨੀਪੈਕ ਹਲਚਲ ਕੀਪ ਵਾਚਿੰਗ ਐਂਡ ਕੀਪ ਸਪੋਰਟਿੰਗ ਜੇ ਤੁਸੀਂ ਮੋਰਗੇਜ ਦੀ ਭਾਲ ਵਿੱਚ ਹੋ ਪਰਚੇਸ ਰੀਫਾਈਨੈਂਸਿੰਗ ਜਾਂ ਐਕੁਇਟੀ ਟੇਕ ਆਊਟ ਫਰਸਟ ਸੈਕਿੰਡ ਮੋਰਗੇਜ ਲਾਈਨ ਆਫ ਕ੍ਰੈਡਿਟ ਜਾਂ ਪ੍ਰਾਈਵੇਟ ਫੰਡਸ ਬੈਡ ਕ੍ਰੈਡਿਟ ਹੋਵੇ ਸੈਲਫ ਐਮਪਲੋਇਡ ਔਰ ਨਿਊ ਟੂ ਕੈਨੇਡਾ ਤੁਸੀਂ ਸਤਨਾਮ ਸਿੰਘ ਨੂੰ ਮੋਰਗੇਜ ਬ੍ਰੋਕਰ ਨੂੰ ਕੰਟੈਕਟ ਕਰ ਸਕਦੇ ਹੋ 6472431367284131313 As you said Kevin uh, uh, you have met politicians and people in Punjab and you yeah. must have critically tr tried to study them 
people and politicians critically. And as per my observation and my past experience in Punjab, family-based politics is very popular. I'm very much so. Yeah. In very other so. words, you can say that it's very likely that an MLA's or MP's daughter or son would be the next or future MLA or MP, right? That's right. And I see it a lot. what would you say about it? Does that hold good in Canada as well? It's rather rare where you see a you know a father and a son or a daughter uh, or that sort of family politics here in Canada. Having said that, we have two very strong examples for Winnipeg North. Number one, our current Prime Minister Justin Trudeau, his father was the Prime Minister of Canada. So that's very unique. Uh, there's never been a Prime Minister father-son, father-daughter relationship type thing in the, in the past, so that's unique. But here in Winnipeg North, my daughter Cindy, she was elected uh, when she was 24 years old in the last provincial election. And she represents uh, a portion of what I represent at the Manitoba Legislature. Um, having said that, it doesn't happen too often in Canada. Uh, I think that uh, currently there's 338 MPs. Uh, you might have three or four uh, that are in that sort of a situation. It's, it's rare. Great. And uh, about your community connection. I've seen some connection. Whenever people talk about weekend and Kevin, they also talk about McDonald's. <laughs> like, McDonald's, yes. Do you eat at McDonald's or do you love uh, potato chips or what is that? Well, I can tell you that um, sometimes uh, when I do go to the McDonald's, I'm not able to eat because it's so busy. Okay. Um, I've been uh, going to McDonald's uh, for about 30 years now. And the purpose of me going to McDonald's is because, you know, when we knock on doors during the election, people say, well, you know, we only see politicians during elections. So one of the ways in which I thought would be important to be accessible to people was to say that, look, every week, in my case, every Saturday, you can find me at the local McDonald's on Keewayton Street from 10 in the morning till 2 o'clock. The only exception to that is if I'm not in Canada. So if I'm in Canada, uh, I'm at the McDonald's every Saturday from 10 to 2. And uh, we get a lot of people coming. The topic that's most discussed is individuals that are trying to get people from India to come for a visit or the Philippines. Immigration's really, really big at McDonald's for me. But we also deal with burnt out street lamps. It's, it's amazing in terms of the type of response that we get from people. You know, in, in a, during an election time, I knock on doors. That's the thing that people remember most about me, it seems. You go to McDonald's every Saturday. You know, it's interesting. My, uh, my daughter, um, she knocks on a lot of doors uh, with me during elections. And uh, so she's seen how people respond to my weekly visits to McDonald's. So what did she do when she first got elected? She duplicated it. She said, I too want to go to McDonald's. Not the same one, okay. different day, different time. Uh, but I think she understands that people appreciate the fact that you take the time once a week so that they want to come meet with you informally or they have a problem or they want to talk to you that they know you're there. Yeah, being available and being approachable is something very good. That sounds good, that feels yeah. good, right? Yeah. And what, what kind of other questions? For example, visitor visas. There yes. are so many people coming from Punjab these days on visitor visas and sometimes we see rejections and approvals and stuff but it's not consistent. Yeah. Do you come across some questions that really bug people that why it's so well, this guy was approved, this guy was not and there's not a clear cut like they cannot defend it, simply refused. Like, oh, Ab just reflect on it. Absolutely. What do you know about you know, it? You know, Diljeet, it would be wonderful at some point in time where you and I could maybe do another uh, episode and just talk about some of the frustrations. Um, you know, right now we probably get about a, a 55 to 60 percent approval rating. We really need to do a lot better uh, in terms of getting people to come to Canada as visitors. But one of the greatest frustrations that I have, and it's fairly unique. Uh, to India, uh, for me in particular, uh, the Punjab, is where we get marriages taking place. Okay. A marriage takes place, I want to see the family reunited uh, as quickly as possible. And there's far too much frustration on my part when we have a spouse that's still in the Punjab 
and they're wanting to get their family going and who can blame them the number of people that want to be able to come and visit maybe it's a graduation maybe it's a, a wedding celebration they want a family member or even it's a funeral they want family to come and visit it's one of the greatest frustrations that I've had not only in the last couple of years because it's been getting better uh, you know it has been getting better I'll give it that much but there's still so much more that we can that we can do and as I say to give that issue justice we'll have to maybe do a follow-up on it Mr. Pyaru Vela ho gaya ek break da ek vakfe da murde haan thodi der baad keep watching Winnipeg Halchal TV channel Professional qualities the shades the blinds lagge to hade shehar pahunch chukya hai MK window covering Sade shades the windows diyan installations completely customizable ne कोट लैन वास्ते सू अज ही संपर्क करो नब्बे चुरुंजा सतानवे उनाहठ नब्बे नाइन जीरो फाइव फोर नाइन सैवन फाइव नाइन नाइन जीरो नोट कर लो यूनिट नंबर तीन बिल्डिंग नंबर दो सौ चाली क्लेरन स्ट्रीट ब्रमटन ओंटारियो वैबसाइट भी विजिट कर सकते हो एम के विंडो कवरिंग डॉट कॉम हाज ही साढ़े संपर्क करो टच सुनो करके आई हवा चीर दी जावे करके पराली कट्ठी लाई तूनी चेते आवे सत श्रीकाल जी मैं राजवी राजा तुम देख रहे हो विनीपैक हलचल कीप वाचिंग एंड कीप स्पोर्टिंग जे ती मोरगेज की भाल हो परचेस रीफाइनेंसिंग या एकुटी ठीक है फर्स्ट सैकेंड मोरगेज लाइन ऑफ क्रेडिट या प्राइवेट फंड बैड क्रेडिट होल्फ इंपलॉयड और न्यूड कैनेडा ਤੁਸੀਂ ਸਤਨਾਮ ਸਿੰਘ ਨੂੰ ਮੋਰਗੇਜ ਬ੍ਰੋਕਰ ਨੂੰ ਕੰਟੈਕਟ ਕਰ ਸਕਦੇ ਹੋ 6242431313 6472841313 ਬ੍ਰੇਕ ਤੋਂ ਬਾਅਦ ਤੁਹਾਡਾ ਸਵਾਗਤ ਤੁਸੀਂ ਦੇਖ ਰਹੇ ਹੋ ਪ੍ਰੋਗਰਾਮ ਦਿਲਜੀਤ ਬਰਾੜ ਸ਼ੋ ਅਸੀਂ ਇਸ ਵੇਲੇ ਨਾਰਥ ਵਿਨੀਪੈਗ ਦੇ ਮੈਂਬਰ ਪਾਰਲੀਮੈਂਟ ਕੈਵਨ ਲੈਂਬਰੂ ਨਾਲ ਗੱਲਬਾਤ ਕਰ ਰਹੇ ਹਾਂ ਬ੍ਰੇਕ ਤੋਂ ਪਹਿਲਾਂ ਗੱਲਬਾਤ ਚੱਲ ਰਹੀ ਸੀ ਵਿਜ਼ਿਟਰ ਵੀਜ਼ੇ ਨਾਲ ਸੰਬੰਧਿਤ ਸਮੱਸਿਆਵਾਂ ਦੀ ਪੰਜਾਬੀ ਕਮਿਊਨਿਟੀ ਦੇ ਸਵਾਲਾਂ ਦੀ ਤਾਂ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਨੇ ਆਪਣੇ ਤਜਰਬੇ ਸਾਡੇ ਨਾਲ ਸਾਂਝੇ ਕੀਤੇ ਮਿੱਤਰ ਪਿਆਰੋ ਕਿਉਂਕਿ ਇਹ ਇੰਟਰਵਿਊ ਕੈਵਨ ਨਾਲ ਚੱਲ ਰਹੀ ਹੈ ਤੁਹਾਨੂੰ ਪਤਾ ਹੈ ਕਿ ਕੈਵਨ ਹੀ ਇਜ਼ ਕੰਫਰਟੇਬਲ ਇਨ ਇੰਗਲਿਸ਼ ਸੋ ਹੀ ਡਜ਼ਨ ਨੋ ਪੰਜਾਬੀ ਸੋ ਇਸ ਲਈ ਅਸੀਂ ਪੰਜਾਬੀ ਤੇ ਅੰਗਰੇਜ਼ੀ ਦੇ ਮਿਲਗੋਬੇ ਦੇ ਨਾਲ ਇੰਟਰਵਿਊ ਕਰ ਰਹੇ ਹਾਂ ਇਸੇ ਇੰਟਰਵਿਊ ਨੂੰ ਜਾਰੀ ਰੱਖਦੇ ਹੋਏ ਆਈ ਵੁੱਡ ਗੋ ਬੈਕ ਟੂ ਕੈਵਨ ਵਿਦ ਅ ਨਿਊ ਕੁਐਸਚਨ ਲੈਟਸ ਟਾਕ ਅਬਾਊਟ ਦ ਇਲੈਕਸ਼ਨ 2019 ਯੈਸ ਵਾਟ ਵੁੱਡ ਯੂ ਲਾਈਕ ਟੂ ਸੇ ਅਬਾਊਟ ਇਟ Well, you know, in the last election, 2015, we had a change in government. Uh, Stephen Harper was the former prime minister, and now we have uh, Justin Trudeau. That four years, every four years, there's an election. So that means in 2019, it's going to be in October, uh, there's going to be another federal election. So it's coming up quick. Uh, and I think there's some messaging that we hope to be able to get across. We believe, obviously, we've done a good job. uh and we would hope to be able to get another four years but that'll be up to canadians uh, to ultimately decide but it's been a fast three years and uh, 2019 is right around the corner okay and i don't think you plan to retire yet no i don't think so I, I, you know i'm enjoying i enjoy politics one of the things uh dilji that really makes me feel good in politics is when i meet with people and they seem to be happy with the work that my office has done to try to help them um when i'm in ottawa and i'm able to advocate what i believe are important issues you know we can talk about issues like uh, immigration but also issues like healthcare uh, the middle class uh, tax rates uh, there's so many wonderful issues i enjoy debating them all but i also uh and where i get the motivation to continue on is when I'm at someone's home or I go to a good water uh I I visit with people and they're happy and they say kind words uh and they were able to get families reunited quicker that's really what motivates me to want to stick around for for a few more years anyway great great so you're planning to contest again and you've yes. been winning in a row uh, I mean two or three elections in a row you've been a winner as MP right yes three elections now that means people love you 
Of um, course. And, and I love the people. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, it's, you know, I, I, I really appreciate the support that I've had. Uh, I've ran provincially for a number of elections, uh, dating back all the way to 1988, uh, 1990, uh, 95, 2003, 2007, uh, those elections, and federally, 2010, uh, 2011, and 2015. And hopefully, cross my fingers, 2019. Great, and uh, do, you, do you want to share some of the achievements in the past, maybe in the recent uh, sure. years? Yeah. Uh, you have done something in the parliament yes. and you need to remind people? Or? Well, you know, given that we're talking to the Indo-Canadian community, something personally that uh, I'm very proud of, that's something that took place back in 1999 when I was uh, a member of the Legislative Assembly in Manitoba, uh, right under the, the Golden Boy, I introduced a resolution, uh, and that resolution was to recognize the importance of the CALSA. And what was really nice about it is that uh, even though I was the introducer, every member of the Manitoba legislature, all political parties, got behind that resolution and we passed it unanimously. So whether you are liberal, conservative, NDP, all the politicians passed that resolution and what it did is it recognized the importance of the Kelsa. Uh, and that was something that was really important uh, for me. And I, and I say that because uh, of the show that we're on. Now let me fast forward it to the last few years, yeah. okay? Um, in the last few years, uh, we've really put a lot of emphasis on the middle class. So examples of success would be the first thing we did is we actually had a tax break legislation to ensure that the middle class would get a decrease in their taxes. We also put a special tax increase for Canada's wealthiest 1%. Uh, we also uh, increased the Canada Child Benefit. And that Canada Child Benefit has been such a gold mine for here in Winnipeg North because in Winnipeg North we've received more money than any other federal riding in Manitoba. And what that meant is that it's about $9 million every month coming into Winnipeg North and our families. Think of the economic impact that that has. We substantially increased that. We also increased what we called the Guaranteed Income Supplement. That meant uh, for seniors, we literally lift in Winnipeg North in particular, we have some of the poorest seniors in the country, we lifted them out of poverty by giving them the substantial increase for a senior it could be as much as $900 a year. If you're only making $12,000 a year, that's a lot of money. So we have seen a lot of redistribution of wealth. I'm very proud of that. We've been able to accomplish that in the last couple of years. There's many other social policies on health care, on pensions that we've been able to do. Uh, so I think we've accomplished a lot. So we're getting close to that next election. And then we're hoping that uh, we'll be able to get renew that mandate. Talking about the child care, I mean, yes. I, I would, I would uh, focus child care centers, right? Yes. Child care spaces. Yes. They are not as per demand. There are long no. lineups, long wait lists. I, I happen to talk to the families who have little kids. Yes. They are really upset about it. Yeah. And, and there's two ways of looking at it. In 1988, when I was first elected, there was a high demand for uh, child care spaces. And there still is a high demand for childcare spaces. There have been increases overall over the decades, uh, but we've never really been able to meet the demand. But think of the Indo-Canadian community. One of the things that I've noticed about the Indo-Canadian community is that you get a lot of the parents and grandparents that are providing care for children. Yeah. And by us increasing the Canada Child Benefit, we're actually allowing for those families to be able to have more disposable income. Um, we're trying as best we can to increase the uh, number of child care spots, but at the very least, we're ensuring that children are getting more money. So there's a little bit of a trade-off. We still need to increase the number of child care spots, but at the very least, uh, we are really improving on getting the money in the pockets of families uh, and for many of those families, they don't use the child care, but rather they have mom, uh, moms, or I should say grandparents, taking care of their, of their children. And so that's an indirect subsidy, if I can put it that way, for child care. What would be uh, 
the election campaign look like for liberals in 2019? What would be the major issues you would be fighting on? I really believe it's going to be on the middle class. Uh, we went into 2015 saying that we want to improve the living uh, for Canada's middle class and those that want to become a part of the middle class. Uh, I suspect that uh, we are going to be judged on that. What did we do to improve the condition of Canada's middle class? I think that's going to be the big issue come 2019. So what we're going to hear is answers to that question. You know, we're going to hear the Prime Minister saying, you know, that we gave the middle class tax break. We gave the, the Canada Child Benefit. We increased uh, the guaranteed income supplements. We protected some pension uh, programs. Uh, we're grow, we grew the economy. You know, we, you know, in the last three years, we have seen over 600,000 jobs created. That is a phenomenal number. We have the lowest unemployment rate than we've had in decades. We've invested in the infrastructure. All of that helps support our middle class. A healthy middle class means a healthy economy, and all of us benefit by that. And I think you plan to continue serving the people in the area you're serving right now. Yes. And for that, you have to have have a win, nomination. Have a nomination and win it, right? Yes. So yes. let's talk about it. How how this uh, for for my audience? Yeah. Uh, uh, let's discuss how this system works. Nomination system. Sure. It doesn't matter what political party um, that you want to represent. At the end of the day, you have to get nominated. Uh, for me, uh, in order to be get nominated, I had to show that I've reached out into the community. Uh, and made thousands of connections, phone calls, talked to a lot of people. We had to, to raise money for the campaign. Uh, we had to be able to show that we're ready. And because I was able to demonstrate that, and because I'm an incumbent, I'm actually going to be nominated tomorrow uh, or on, on Saturday. Uh, every uh, MP is being asked to do what that I've done and then they will be ratified and nominated um, but generally speaking for someone to to be a candidate in the election they go through a nomination process uh, to represent the party uh, and then if they are the nominated candidate then their name gets to appear on the ballot right like Canadians don't vote for the Prime Minister direct it's a different type of a system and for a lot of people, they don't necessarily understand. What do you do when you go to vote? What name appears on the ballot? Something we should probably even talk about. <laughs> yeah, that's something you know? people, uh, people, some of the people know. But, but I mean, about nominations, like, why would it be Kevin who would be fighting, who would be contesting uh, from this area? Absolutely. Would there be another liberal competing with you to be nominated in the same constituency? Yes. That's my question. And, How does that work? And, and often you will, where there's a contested nomination, you'll get people from the same party running to be the candidate, right? Um, and then, uh, and that happens a lot. Uh, in 2010, for example, uh, I had Mike Pactican uh, was running, uh, wanting to be the candidate, so was I. So I had to first have a, a, an election amongst Liberal Party members. I was fortunate enough to, to win, which means that I got to be the, can the Liberal Party candidate. Then you go to an election, right? Um, and then on the election, and what a lot of people don't understand, uh, Diljit, is that when there's an election, and that's coming up in October, uh, what'll happen is that they're gonna have candidates of all political parties that will be knocking on doors, putting up signs. Uh, they'll be doing all sorts of things to try to say, will you please vote for me? And uh, on election day, uh, the voters will go, if you're a Canadian citizen, you get to vote 18 years or older and a Canadian citizen, you get to vote. And when you go to vote, you will see the names of the candidates in that riding, along with their political party. You won't see the leaders of the political party on the ballot, you'll see the local candidate, right? Um, and the candidate that gets the most votes gets to represent the area. And I was very fortunate to have the most votes in the last election.
in Winnipeg North. I would like to ask you about uh, your forthcoming events in the near future. What, what, what are you organizing for the community or the party? I actually have three very, what I call special events, signature events every year. The next one is actually called my diversity event. Uh, every October, uh, I rent the C Maples Community Center and we will have some performers, some heritage appreciation, uh, some free food, uh, and uh, I get the opportunity to say a few words. It's actually uh, co-hosted uh, by my daughter, uh, Cindy, who's the local MLA in the area. Um, and uh, that's coming up very soon. It's in October. It's, it happens to be this Sunday. I also have a Canada Day a celebration every July 1, uh, and that event's held in Tyndall Park. Uh, and then in January, I have my pierogi lunch, and that's in the Minarski area. So you kind of get a sense, three different special events in different areas. I do it as a way to say thank you. I'm so grateful that I'm the Member of Parliament. It's kind of like an outreach. I hope that people come out. It allows me to say thank you. I've been doing it now for years. The Canada Day event we've been doing for probably about 25 years now. Um, and it's just a special way for me as an elected official to say thank you. It's such a privilege to be able to, an honor, uh, to be able to represent uh, the people of, of Winnipeg North or uh, constituents as a whole. Great. Um, we're running out of time now. And Kevin, would you like to say a few words in closing to your viewers? I, I really think it's great, Diljit, that you have a, a TV program like this. It's something that's long overdue. Um, you know, if I was to conclude some thoughts, I guess what I would conclude on, because it's Indo-Canadian, and I'm going to focus on what is the majority of my Indo-Canadian community in the North End, only because we've been talking a lot about it in Ottawa. And that is our Sikh Heritage Month legislation. It's being debated in Ottawa uh, and should pass, hopefully, uh, later uh, this month, or if not, the beginning of November. And if we can get it through the Senate before the end of the year, that means that for the first time we're going to have a law in Manitoba or in Canada, not Manitoba, in Canada, that recognizes Sikhism every April going forward. And for me, what that means is that we can really talk about and promote uh, Sikhism uh, during a very important month every year. Okay. Uh, and as I say, for me, Canada is all about diversity. So when I think of diversity, obviously it goes more than just ethnic. It also it factors in religion. And Sikhism, Christianity, Muslim, Hindu, those all play a very important role in Canada's diversity. Uh, so maybe uh, that would be my, my last thoughts and, and hopefully we'll be able to visit you in the future. Great. Thank you, Kevin. That was a nice talk. It's my pleasure. Thank you. Isan Member Parliament, Kevin Lemru. Je jyonde rey, ta agli war kise nave mehman naal, nave vishe naal, dobara hazar homage. Tad tak lai, Allah belli, keep watching Winnipeg Halchal TV channel. Bari barsi khatan gya si, bari barsi khatan gya si, khat ke le on da kiwi, aju apa saare dekhiye, Winnipeg Halchal TV, aju apa saare dekhiye, Winnipeg Halchal TV, आज वापस आ रहे देखिए